gentlemen and welcome yet again to this episode of Dinner Guide. My name is Chef Andy and today, just like for the many next episodes we're going to be focusing on, we're going to be touching on some very beautiful continental dishes and on this particular episode we're going to be giving you a nice beautiful traditional dish which we're going to be putting a bit of our touch on and we're going to be making a very very simple mac and cheese. But before we do so, we'll start by introducing the ingredients on the table. So from the front, I've got some beautiful buck bacon. I've also got some, some cheddar cheese, a bit of some spring onion, some parsley, some butter, a bit of some lemon there, and some uh, thick whipping cream. I also have some olive oil, some salt, and some black pepper at the back here. A beautiful bowl there with some penne pasta. I also have some parmesan cheese, some breadcrumbs, and of course, one piece of egg. So we're going to take a short break now and give you a bit of time to freshen up. And when we do come back, we're going to dig into this very, very simple and easy dish. So please don't touch that dial. We'll be right. Ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who are just tuning in, we are just introducing the ingredients which we'll be working with today, and we're going to be turning this very simple ingredients into a very, very beautiful dish, which is a mac and cheese. But before we do so, we're going to start off by cooking some of the ingredients that we have. And to help me with that, I've got a pan here that's already reheating, which we're going to fry our bacon in. And I've also got a nice big pot at the side here with some water which we're basically going to allow to come to the boil and we're quickly going to cook our pasta in. But before we do so, we're going to add some water to a pot of, some salt to a pot of water. And we're also going to add about a table and a half, a tablespoon and a half of some olive oil. And then just allow that to come to the boil. While that continues, on the next pan we're also going to be cooking our bacon. So begin by drizzling a bit of olive oil on the pan. And allow your pan to heat up. Moving your pan of course round just to make sure your oil spreads over the surface of your pan. And next up, we're using some kitchen towel. Just proceed to just wipe the inside of your pan. And this basically will help you to make sure that you don't have too much oil in your pan and you only have just a little bit that you require. And next up, just begin to grab your bacon slices one at a time and move on to your pan and allow to start cooking on the first side. Proceed to add all your slices of bacon, making sure that all your slices touch the surface of the pan. And all we are going to do at this stage is allow our bacon to first cook until it's golden brown on one side. And then we're going to proceed to turn that over. Basically at this point you just need to give your bacon anywhere between five to six minutes on a very hot pan to cook on each side. And now our water is now boiling, it's now come to the boil. All you need to do now is just into the boiling water, add your pasta. And using a spoon begin to give your pasta a bit of a mix. And this should actually aid you in making sure that your penne doesn't stick together. 
and allow your pasta now to cook for anywhere between 10 to 15 minutes. And then just proceed to check on your bacon, always starting with the slice that went in first and begin to turn your bacon over. And of course at this stage, very important to make sure that your bacon cooks until it gets very, very crispy. And once more, give your pasta another mix. And allow to continue cooking. Now you're going to, of course, take this opportunity now to proceed to combine your other ingredients. So we're going to start off by making first the coat, or rather the top crust that we're going to be uh, using to top our mac and cheese before we throw it in the oven. And for that you will need about half a cup of parmesan cheese and half a cup of breadcrumbs. To that you will add some ground black peppercorns. And of course a pinch of salt. And using a whisk just proceed to mix everything together. And you can now proceed to keep your crust aside, which you're going to be using a little later. Now just to bring your attention back to the pan, your bacon's now nicely cooked, very golden brown. Now at this stage we're just going to proceed to move our bacon onto the board. Allow them just a few seconds to cool off and we'll proceed to chop these up. Right now, on the same pan, take it back to the heat. And next off, start by grabbing your butter. And give it just a bit of time to melt. Moving your pan, of course, right around the sides, making sure to melt your butter as quick as, quick as you can. And once you get to that stage, begin by adding your spring onions. Also grab your fresh parsley. And using a sharp knife, proceed to chop your parsley as fine as you can. Right to your pan, add your parsley. And now proceed to chop your bacon into thin strips. and add those onto your pan as well. And then just proceed to mix everything together, tossing everything in there. And just turn your heat down now and basically just allow everything, all the flavors in your pan to incorporate. And now just to come back to the pasta, continue to mix that through. So this has now been cooking halfway now. It should actually Take another few minutes just to finish off. And basically, something also to also mention when making pasta, always remember to keep your, keep your lid off the pan. Remember, pasta will bubble quite a bit and it actually could spill and uh, make quite a mess on, the, on your stove top. So very, very important to always remember to cook your pasta with the lid off. And now just to bring my attention back to the bacon, remember we were just allowing those to just really absorb the flavors. And now we're just going to finish that off by adding a bit of cream in there. And last but not least, we're also going to be using a bit of some lemon zest. So I'm just going to zest about half a teaspoon of some lemon zest into the bacon mixture. And 
This basically does a very beautiful job of bringing the flavors together and it actually also helps to really cut the tanginess and the sweetness of the bacon. Then just remember to also incorporate all the zest that's at the back of your grater. And using a wooden spoon, proceed to combine everything together by mixing. And remember this mixing should be done off the heat of course. Right, once that's mixed, just allow it to sit at the room temperature and just allow it to cool off. Also proceed to check on your pasta. Be very, uh, making sure of course to be very careful not to overcook it. And remember one particular good stage to check with your pasta or to check for the doneness of your pasta. You can actually just use a knife and just press the knife onto the board. And if your pasta doesn't break, then you know it's not cooked yet. So this should actually be able to break even by the touch of the hand. If you try and rub it through your fingertips and it doesn't really break very easily, then it means you just need to cook it a little longer. Right now the pasta is about two minutes away. Now we're just going to grab a bowl and basically this I'm going to be using to just drain the pasta really quick before we add it into the mixture with the cream and the bacon. But very, very importantly, uh, a sieve does come in handy to actually help you to drain your pasta very, very quickly. And remember for this particular stage, we're not going to be cooling our pasta off. We're just going to uh, throw it into the mixture while it's still hot to actually aid it in grasping all the flavors in there. And we're also going to be incorporating a bit of some cheddar cheese to our dish. So we'll start by just segmenting part of our cheddar block there. So I'm using some very, very beautiful young cheddar cheese. So as usual, start by taking off that waxy layer on the sides. And Proceed to cut your cheese into some quarter inch chunks and just finish off by just chopping that as coarse as you can. Remember you actually want a bit of those cheese chunks to actually be inside your mac and cheese. So it's actually the reason why we are cutting them into some small cubes. Remember, you're also not limited to working with only the cheeses we have on the counter. You can actually be as creative as to try some very, very beautiful cheeses. There's a very, very beautiful selection of cheeses in your retail outlets now. So any hard cheese that you may be able to find, if not parmesan or cheddar, it will work just as good. Right, so pasta is now almost done. All we're going to do now is just take that off the pan and just pour that right into your sieve. Of course, giving it a quick shake, allowing the excess water to drain. And then from there, proceed to add that into your pan with the bacon and the cream. And now just proceed to mix everything together. Making sure, of course, to take quite a bit of time to mix through. Once mixed, proceed now to add about two thirds of your chopped cheese and mix again. Finishing off with a bit of seasoning with some ground black peppercorns and last but not least a pinch of salt. And 
And once that is mixed through, you're basically now going to finish this in your oven. So very, very important to proceed to reheat your oven. So I'm just going to use my, I'm going to move my rack to the center of the oven and I'm only going to be using the top element. So switch your setting to the top element only and proceed to start reheating your oven. You can reserve the rest of the cheese just to add on the top. And now all you're left to do now is transfer your mixture into a container that you can actually be able to bake in. So I'm just going to grab a glass bowl dish. So this is a particularly good one that works very well for this uh, process. And all you're going to do now is proceed to add the mixture into the bowl. spoon try and scrape everything especially the melted cheese as well into your bowl discard your pan and using the same spoon just proceed to level off your pasta pressing down gently Simple as that, and now all you're left to do is continue to add the rest of your topping. So to that, I will first of all start with a bit of cheese. So we're going to start off by adding some of that beautiful grated parmesan. Next, some of those dices of uh, cheddar. Just sprinkle them right around, it doesn't matter what fashion they go in. And now last but not least, the last and final topping of the dish. And remember, this is basically where the gratinating happens. This is where you actually get that beautiful crispy mac and cheese topping. And for those of you who didn't see what went into this, all we added was a bit of salt and pepper and equal portions of Parmesan cheese to breadcrumbs. All you're going to do is give that a nice quick mix by hand. And at this stage, very, very important that I mention as well, uh, you can actually be able to crack your egg into the same mixture that we had on the pan once it's cooled off. It will actually give it a bit of richness. But for this particular recipe, we've decided to void the, the egg because the cheese is already a bit rich. But if you do have situations whereby maybe you don't really have some cream to go with, you can whip your eggs, mix it with the bacon and just add it into the dish it will actually give you as, as much of the richness as you'd have in the other situation. And now just to finish that off, proceed to add your breadcrumbs mixture, making sure to try and cover as much of the surface as possible. So basically what you're trying to do is completely conceal the, uh, the underlying layer with the parmesan. and proceed to do so until you have all of your mixture used up. Then just use your hand to level that off, making sure of course to not have too much of your filling or too much of your coating at one particular position. And very also important to make sure to have at least one very consistent layer over the top because remember that is going to melt down and it is actually going to be the most presentable part of your dish so now our ovens now preheated and we can now actually move this in so we're going to be throwing this and we're just basically just going to gratinate the top which means you're basically just going to brown the breadcrumbs and the parmesan at the top giving it giving it a very nice beautiful tough crust so very very simply open your oven and now slide your dish in. As I mentioned again, making sure to only use the top side of your oven, which is the element. And basically all you need to do now is set your timer for anywhere between 10 and 12 minutes and allow it to brown and take it out as soon as you see a beautiful golden uh, crust on the top. So we're gonna take a short break now, clear our table, and when we come back, we're gonna take that out and we're gonna see what it looks like.
So please don't touch don't touch the dial. We'll be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who are just with us, we took a short break and we were just uh, gratinating our, our mac and cheese that's in the oven. And this is now done. We're just going to take that out quickly, place it over our board. And now as you can see, a nice beautiful texture of the gratinated uh, breadcrumbs and parmesan at the top. Now we're just going to proceed to plate it. So I'm just going to start by splitting it right through the center. Simple as that. And just using a spoon. Actually, Grab your plate and proceed to plate your dish. It will actually be a little messy once the crust is uh, broken, of course. But as you can see, it's got a nice, beautiful, cheesy, gooey inside. And it's basically what we were trying to achieve. So just proceed to dish that out. And simple as that, grab just a bit of kitchen paper and proceed to just reconstitute your ingredients, making sure that they're all right within the plate. And of course, once you're done, Finish that off with a bit of garnish over the top and a simple drizzle of olive oil right around your plate. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a very, very simple to make mac and cheese. I hope you've actually enjoyed watching how it's done and you've managed to pick something that you can incorporate in your very own kitchens as well. From my end, I will thank you once more for tuning in. And thank you very much once more for your feedback. I will remind for those of you who don't know, we do have a Facebook page. We do have some YouTube links as well attached there. There's plenty for you to learn, plenty of you to see. But from this particular side of my end, I'm basically done now. I will actually wish you a very, very beautiful evening. And until the next episode, see you soon. Mm -hmm.